as we begin this second lecture on enolate chemistry, and what we're talking about are compounds that have a carbon that is next door to a carbonyl group um, and, that, and hydrogens which are uh, on that carbon. And those hydrogens are more acidic because of the fact that when we remove that proton, the negative charge that is remaining is resin and stabilized by this carbonyl group. And we've looked before at all the different flavors of those uh, uh, these types of compounds in terms of enolates. Uh, of course, uh, by now you should have picked up that if we have two carbonyl groups next door to uh, a carbon with uh, hydrogens on it, because there are two of them, uh, it's actually a little bit easier to, or a lot easier in fact, to remove the hydrogens which are in, in this kind of set setup. So, so the pKa of hydrogens over here uh, is in this kind of setup as a next to a ketone, uh, around about 26 uh, over here next in this kind of setup over here in the regions of 11 to 15 uh, pKa units. Uh, th that's quite significant because that's almost 10 or more than 10 orders of magnitude difference between the acidities of those two and that's very large and so we, we have to take that under consideration. <clears throat> I've also, in the, uh, uh, in the class, we probably have now looked at the different flavors of bases that we have. And we've looked at the oxygen class, the methoxies, uh, hydroxy, methoxies, ethoxies, the alkoxides. And we know that, uh, as an alcohols, have pKa's around about 16. So we can think of that in terms of uh, their ba basicity as well. We've looked at uh, hydrides. We looked at the amides, all right, N minus class, very strong uh, bases, and then the most, uh, or the strongest of the bases are our alkyl lithiums, just in this series. Um, so butyl lithium, S, S butyl lithium, and, and tertiary butyl lithium, these are very strong bases. What I want to look at now, though, is um, the uh, just a uh, the, the st stable enolate equivalence. Uh, what I mean by that is when we are making an enolate, remember that this is an acid-base reaction. So when we, we deprotonate there, we have to be careful about what we're doing. So for instance, um, pKa of 26, if we had to take an alkoxide and try to deprotonate that, the equilibrium is not going to lie in favor of the enolate. It's going to be in the form of the, uh, the the ketone far more. So we have to, uh, the, there are a couple of ways that we can generate a specific stable enolate equivalent. So we're going to start with the lithium lithium enolate, which is just the enolate with a counter ion of lithium. And, and they become popular because of the particular base that we use to form the enolate. So let's just start with a very simple ketone. Uh, some generic ketone, uh, and the base that we're going to the base that we're going to be using is uh, LDA, and by now hopefully you know that LDA is lithium diisopropyl amide. All right, uh, and we have the lithium counter ion. So this is a very strong base. The amine, all right, uh, di diisopropyl amine has a pKa of about thirty six. And we know that this uh, pKa is between 25 and 26. So the important thing to note here is that the, the pKa difference between these uh, two is 10, all right, which is an absolutely massive amount. So the enolate that would form would look like this, and we'd have the lithium counter ion. I'll just include it there for now. Um, this equilibrium, if we've got 10 orders of uh, uh, 10 pKa difference, difference, uh, uh, difference over there. That is the equivalent of 10 to the power of 10 in terms of this equilibrium over here. So that is a flippin' big number. That's 10 billion. So that means this base is strong enough so that when we mix this base with this ketone, we'll get 10 billion molecules of this for every one molecule of those. Uh, so for all intents and purposes, using LDA, 
we exclusively form this enolate over here. So we use one equivalent of LDA, we're going to get one equivalent of this enolate, and it is something that we can now use in reactions, and is so is known as a stable enolate equivalent, all right, and that we can then use in reactions. We won't buy this in a bottle, okay, we'll form this in situ, but we can form this exclusively. We don't have to think anymore about this as being an equilibrium. It's effectively going just to this enolate over there. The second stable enol enolate equivalent is the silyl enol ether, and, and this, is, this is it over here. TMS stands for trimethyl silyl. It's, it's a silicon with three methyl groups bonded to it, and of course it's then going to the oxygen over there. So that's what it looks like. The TMS group is a very important silyl group in organic chemistry, and for all intents and purposes, uh, it can be very helpful to think about the TMS group as being a very large H atom. Right. You will see in a lot of chemistry of trimethylsilyl groups, by thinking about the TMS group as being like a large H, will actually make the, the chemistry surrounding uh, this particular functional group a lot easier to to, to understand, and you'll see the reactivity is very similar. How do we make TMS uh, uh, silyl enol ethers? Well, there are a couple of ways. The one way is to actually, first of all, make the, uh, so we call this option A, is to make the enolate using LDA, using one equivalent of LDA, and then part two is to add TMS chloride, all right? which of course will just be trimethylsilyl chloride. It's a good leaving group. And so we form the enolate and we put the TMS group on there. Go and practice doing the mechanism for that. You should be able to do that now. Uh, the second way is to use just TMS chloride and uh, triethylamine as the base in this reaction. I, I want to deal with the mechanism of this uh, for, for, for a minute or so, because this is something which uh, people do get a bit wrong. Triethylamine is a very weak base, and it's certainly not going to pick up a proton to form the enolate, and therefore we're going to get this to, to happen. Rather, like I said, think about TMS being like an H. If this was an H, this would be HCl, and an H, you know, is a, is a, a bronstic acid. Um, so this is not a Bronsted acid, but this is a rather a type of a Lewis acid. So what happens in this reaction from, from a mechanistic point of view is that we start off with a ketone and the TMS group, all right, will be attacked by the Lewis basic oxygen of the, the ketone and will kick off the chlorine atom like that. What we get is this O T M S plus on the oxygen, and we now have um, uh, that molecule there. The next step is now finally the base can come and pick up this proton or one of the three protons that is at that carbon. And it can do that because the TMS group is on the oxygen, putting this positive charge over there. It has rendered this H a whole lot more acidic than it ever was before. And so the weak base can now pick up this H and give in its electrons like that. And so we end up with the product over there. Plus, of course, in, in the second reaction, we would have ended up with the triethyl ammonium iron and Cl minus. That's just a, a salt which will then precipitate out of the reaction. Okay, so the TMS silyl enol ethers are very important um, silyl equivalents. The reason being is that although they aren't uh, uh, particularly stable, they're stable enough for us to isolate and to use them uh, in reactions uh, uh, down the line. Uh, and it's the way that we use these that we're going to be investigating uh, further on in, in the course. But for now, again, thinking of this TMS group over here as being like an H, this silyl enol ether is actually the silyl equivalent uh, of 
a enol, not an enolate, but an enol.